Hello, welcome to a special vlog for Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. I just got back from seeing a replay Symphony of Heroes at the Arlen Schnitzer Concert Hall in Portland, and want to give my thoughts somewhat in brief about the concert. In short, it's very well done. If you're not familiar with it, it is a replay is a symphonic presentation of video game music. Um, it's different from Video Games Live in that Video Games Live deliberately promotes a very rock concert style presentation with lasers and, um, well, both have screen videos, but more lasers, light shows, um, cosplay on stage, and actually kind of a more heavy use of electric guitar. Whereas Replay is very much more of an orchestral piece, focusing on arrangements of the music for the orchestra. Less orchestra plus a rock band kind of scenario. Um, so, if you've seen video games live, what you're getting from Replay is also very different. There's also a, another couple orchestral shows out there. There's... Um, there's the tri there's the Symphony of the Goddesses, I believe the name of it, which is focused on the Legend of Zelda music, and there is a Final Fantasy focused one, like Dear Friends or something like that. Um, and both of those, and also are classical focused. Um, there's play a video game Symphony as well. What makes Replay different from those ones, I mean, aside from the Final Fantasy focused one and the Legend of Zelda focused one? is it kind of contextualizes each piece of music in the form of Joseph Campbell's monomyth. If you're not familiar with Joseph Campbell's monomyth, or The Hero with a Thousand Faces, um, I recommend you check out Campbell's stuff. There's plenty of information about it online. But the short version is, um, most cultures, there's Campbell's original thesis was all cultures, but there's been some anthropological disagreement on this. Um, so, most cultures play bear form here. They have a... There's a recurring theme of, of the mythology in that culture where each story goes through a series of basic beats. Um, there's be minor to major variations between each work, um, with each beat, but... and how it's executed, but again, there's a variation. Um... And so for the for the symphony, it takes us through each beat in Joseph Campbell's monomyth, and then picks a piece of music which reflects somewhat each stage in the monomyth, or uses a game where a portion of the story or theme of the game reflects that portion of the monomyth. Um, each narration sequence is presented with images from the game Dear Esther, along with music from that game. Um, and it's a very nicely done show. Um, video game music in a whole tends to be kind of bombastic, but this form of bombasticism focuses, kind of actually puts the focus more on the games and on the music than on the spectacle. Um, most games have a screen video, though a few pieces, actually they have no real screen video at all, aside from, like, footage, well, not footage, but, like, cameras showing the members of the orchestra for people who are up at the cheap seats, like I was. Um, the, show, the set list is generally good. Um, I have a few, a couple minor issues with it. Um... The piece has, the set list includes Lair, which is an odd piece. The game is generally panned and I don't have much praise for the music, but then again, Video Games Live used Advent Rising among its set music, so it, it's music set. So it could be just a general situation of this is the game, this is this presentation, this shows Advent Rising. Um, the narration. I like contextualizing everything with the, with the monomyth, but the presentation seems a little, a little odd, just because, um, in terms of having a, a voiceover narration, um, the way it's done in the fashion 
on this. The initial presentation is that it is telling you that it's a storyteller telling you a story, but as it proceeds, the narration shifts to telling you a story about a hero to you being the hero. And I understand, I sort of understand why. Because in video games, we play the hero. Or heroes, depending on the game. Um, even if it's something where you're not necessarily doing anything overtly heroic. Like being a person of action, or that sort of thing. If it's just running around solving silly puzzles, like in Monkey Island. Um, we are the protagonist, or antagonist, or the, the focus of the narrative. We control, in some form or another, how the narrative plays out. So I, I kind of understand taking that route, but it's going to be done a little better. Um, the other odd little note about the concert is the set list is weighted kind of heavily towards more recent games or games and franchises that have current gen slash next gen titles um, or games which are developed in the United States. Not just like Western developed, but games developed in the US or Canada. Uh, North American developed titles. We don't have a lot of games with I mean, we have some some significant titles with Japanese composers. We get um, a couple tracks by Nobo Nubo Uematsu, um, Libre Fatale from Final Fantasy Seven and or Eight, and a suite from Lost Odyssey. We get a suite from Chrono Trigger, suite from Metal Gear Solid, which is kind of half Western, half Japanese, because we also have the Harry Griggs and Williams contrib contribution. And also, we have uh, music from Castlevania, Shadow of the Colossus, and Kingdom Hearts. But it's like, oh, that's a rough count. Three, four, five, six tracks out of 16 tracks. Under half is represented from Japanese games, those Japanese game music composers. No Legend of Zelda, no Mario, uh, so Koji Kondo's music is not represented on there. Um, the Persona series has no music on there. To be fair, the Persona music tends to be a little more J poppy, but still, there's less work that we've done to arrange that. Um, Nothing from Mega Man series. Like Japan, Japanese music really un underrepresented here. For that matter, European composers, with the exception of the Castlevania suite, because we get some of the music from the more recent Castlevania titles. Um, the Castlevania music, well, the, the European games, didn't under underrepresented. No Rayman. Um, no Beyond Good and Evil. No. Assassin's Creed, I realize I'm focusing on Ubisoft here, but they're a major European developer, the French, and they have a very strong focus on the music in their games. And that's something which could be better represented the show. Um, so, there's that. On the other hand, the show is wonderfully well done. Um, selections of music on here I know the exception of Lair is stuff which is truly very good. In some cases, pieces which I didn't necessarily even pay attention to, even which I may have missed when playing the game, perhaps that I was listening to other things. But now I'm getting a new, appre new appreciation for um, the set list includes a piece from, like, for example, Guild Wars 2, which is a game I play, but the track that you can. So they tend to listen to other things, podcasts, movies, TV shows, whatever, while playing MMOs. I completely missed out on this, and it kind of gave me new appreciation for the game's music. I want to go back and kind of take away the distractions of the podcasts and my own music and let the game's music pull, sort of speak on its own for a bit. Um, 
There's also a bit of a weird sound, well, odd sound mix problems. Um, for some of the choral bits, we didn't really get a good audio for my seating of the choir, which is particularly a problem with when we got the uh, Skyrim theme, the Dovahkiin, so, uh, the song of the Dovahkiin, song of Skyrim, in the conclusion of the set. Um, because and that's a very strong choral piece, and we didn't really quite get it. Um, and that was kind of a bummer. I always feel like, because it was an encore, got this, that somehow somebody turned off mics for like the choir or something like that. And because they thought the show was over, and the good news is, Arlington Center Concert Hall is a very acoustic, very well acoustically designed concert hall. We were still able to hear the choir anyway, but not as well as I'd like. Um, other than that, I would say that this is a very good show. If replay comes to a symphony near you, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, one of their minor, minor, tiny little complaint. This is a true nitpick. At the merchandising booth, I didn't have a CD I could buy. I couldn't buy a copy of the, of the album to listen to over and over again and enjoy. And frankly, well... Throwing my money at the screen and not doing anything. It's not giving me the CD in my hands. It's like giving me the, the set list, the, the music of the show in my hands to listen to whenever I want. And it makes me sad. Why you make me sad, replay Symphony of Heroes? Why you make me sad? You broke my heart, Frida. You broke my heart, replay Symphony of Heroes. I knew it was you. You broke my heart. I'm doing Michael Corleone with a bad Italian accent. So, anyway, it's a great show. Definitely worth checking out if you come near you. Um, and if the people who do the show are watching this, please, for the love of God, put out a CD. I will buy it. Please, shut up and take my money. I'm giving you my money. I want to give you my money. I'm pushing it at the screen and nothing's happening. So, that pretty much covers everything. Um, if you enjoyed the show, if you'd like me to review other musical presentations, if, say, another video game music show comes to Portland, we've gotten th four already. We've gotten Replay, we've gotten Final Fantasy, we've gotten... Um, the Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses. I've gotten this. Some of these may and I've missed two of those. I missed Replay. I'm sorry. I missed Zelda. I missed Final Fantasy. Those shows may come back. If you want me to catch those shows, please let me know. Um, and also, tickets cost money. Please feel free to toss some money in the tip jar, or support Patreon. Or do really any other number of things that, are, that you can do um, to help provide additional money to let me go to these concerts or that sort of thing. View more games and get the show up more often. Next time I'll get back to doing reviews of actual stuff. Also hopefully by then the copyright flag will be removed from my review of Jimmy's Food Real Revolution, so I can do, you know, video footage in my reviews without tempting fate too much. So, in any case, until next time, thank you very much for watching.